hi this is joy and welcome back to my channel today we're going to be studying adorned book by nancy demas wolgamuth chapter two so let's get started so thank you for grace last week i didn't make a video um and so we are one week behind but if you haven't yet um, gotten the book, you can easily get it on your Kindle or at your local bookstore or probably your library. Um, and if you want to go back and watch chapter one um, from two weeks ago. So my struggle when I'm doing this is always that I kind of have to go back and forth on my Kindle. So we are on chapter two, which is right after um, part one, which is a woman under God. So we're going to start with God, and we're starting with doctrine, um, which is a big word and that we're going to kind of unpack as we go through this. And I'm not going to rush to try to make this a quick video, so um, you're free to, you know, come and go, grab a cup of tea come in and out as you feel the need, but I don't want to um, just make this a quick video so that I can, so people will stay watching it. I want to actually discuss the stuff in the book. So just as though we were sitting at a book club, this might take, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So um, I'm just going to read at the beginning of the chapter, it has uh, Titus 2, 1 through 5, and then verse 10. So I'm going to read that. Teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slave to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior." So let's talk about doctrine. So there is a really good definition. Doctrine, you see, simply means teaching. It's the content of what we believe, the understanding of reality that shapes our faith. Like soil in a garden, doctrine provides the context for growing our character. And so what we, the soil of the doctrine, it says, is um, that we're planting in can make us beautiful and help us point others to the beauty of Christ and his gospel, but only if it's the right doctrine. And um, it's said in here that there was a study that, first of all, it was, she was talking about her friend Holly, um, who believed basically, you know, if you um, do good and serve God that everything will work out okay and then she kept having miscarriages and some other hard things in her life and um, she really had to go back and reevaluate what do I believe about God what are my beliefs the foundation of my faith and what am I placing that on I've seen this happen often in friends lives when things don't go their way all of a sudden their doctrine is shaken about what they believe about the Bible and about God um, and then they make choices based on their changed view. So really what we need as women to start off this study is sound doctrine. And that what I was gonna say before, there is a study, she was saying something about, hang on. Yeah, so of the roughly 85% of people who said they were Christians, that they knew a Christian, in a study, only 15% indicated that they saw any lifestyle difference between their Christian friends and their non-Christian friends. Um, and this was students, but I would say that this would probably relate to most um, age groups, or at least some age groups. Um, but true believers will be noticeably, beautifully different, and sound doctrine is what makes it so. Um, it says, sound doctrine is radically transformational. Lived out, it changes everything about us. It counsels us. It corrects us. It's like an onboard guidance system directing and determining our course. And ultimately, it transforms the culture through us and around us. Um, and so in the New Testament, particularly Paul's teachings, we're talking about um, sound doctrine and trying to teach the new church about sound doctrine and what the tenets of belief were. 
Um, and it lists them here, who we are, who God is, what it means to be a Christian, what the gospel is, who Jesus is, why he came, why he died, and why he lives again. Um, it, and it says, sound doctrine tells us that God is sovereign over all, over time, over nature, over us, over every minute, minute detail in the universe. Sound doctrine tells us that we exist to bring glory to God and that every circumstance that comes into our lives can contribute to that end. And you might need to sit with some of this for a while um, because I think we might nod and agree, but do we believe these things to our core? Or do they change the way that we live and act and move in our lives? Are these beliefs enough to change our hearts and our lives. Um, and sound doctrine tells us that even as believers, we can expect to struggle with indwelling sin. Hello, I know all about that. Fleshly appetites, yes, and self-centeredness, amen. It reminds us that if we are not abiding in Christ and allowing his spirit to do his sanctifying work in us, we may be capable of producing religious work but not bearing spiritual fruit. I don't know if you have any examples in your life, but I know I have seen people and I've been there myself where I can do the right things and be religious, but there is no spiritual fruit flowing from that abiding. It's just rules. It's just following. So doctrine is something that we need to know, that we need to study, that we need to understand. But then why? For what purpose? And that's the now what it says in the book um, and so we need to really dig deep into God's word to get it into our souls to understand it but we cannot let it stop there you know I went to Bible school um, for four years and there were some people that knew everything that knew all about doctrine that knew all about different you know denominations and what different verses and interpretations they were so bitter and angry and hateful. Um, and it was like they knew this all in their head, but they hadn't let it sink down to their heart. And I personally do not want to be that kind of person. I want to know God's word. I don't want to just say, oh yeah, Jesus loves everyone and that's good enough for me, so I'm just going to love. I want to actually know what I believe and know what the Bible says because I do actually believe that it is the true word, inspired word of God. And I want to use it for my life. Um, so, okay. Da, 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 da. So we need sound doctrine to keep us grounded, but then we also have to have life that goes along with that doctrine. Um, we may have mastered the word of God, like those people I was saying about at Bible school, but is it evident to others that our hearts are moved by the wonder of what we know? That is what I want for my life. And in Titus 2.10, it says that we would adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior. So we are to be the adornment. Our lives, our joy, our spirit, our happiness, our love is the, to be the adornment of his doctrine. That's where this all starts. It isn't a list of rules. Titus 2 is not a list of rules this, 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 and this, and then you'll have it all figured out. It is so much deeper, and this is the foundation that we have to start on. Um, and so, I'm gonna skip over. There's a lot, lot, lot more in this chapter, so um, make sure you study it. And then, um, here at the end, it says, our ultimate purpose is to make much of God. We do that as we experience enjoy and reflect the loveliness of Christ, making him known to a world that is starved for true beauty. I think we have a, a picture in the world of beauty, but it isn't true beauty, like a sunrise or sitting out and watching the ocean. That to me is true beauty and, and propped up beauty would be something that's man-made and is false, maybe like a, a, a pretty scene in a movie or something like that. But you know when you see the real thing, like it just stirs something so deep in your soul. So that, let me get to the end here and we'll ask the questions. I am going, yeah, 
So there's questions for older women and for younger women, and you can decide where you want to be in those. And I want you to go ahead and answer in the comments below any of these that you'd like to answer, or please let me know any comments or ideas that you had that you took out from this chapter. So if a younger woman were looking for a mentor who is solidly grounded in biblical truth and who makes truth beautiful, would she think of you? Why or why not? That is such a good question. <laughs> it is a humbling question. Then number two, going right along that, with that, what practical steps could you take to be better prepared to mentor a young woman? Remember, you don't have to be perfect, praise Jesus, to be helpful. Three, how could you encourage a younger woman in your life to be more intentional about planting and watering her heart in the soil of good doctrine? Again, a really good humbling question. You don't have to answer them in the comments, but I do want you to think about them. And if you have any thoughts, please leave them below. Then for younger women, where have you picked up the doctrines or teachings that most influence your life? TV, movies, friends, family members, mem mentors, books, scriptures, church? Are these wise, godly sources? What is the fruit of these teachings in your life? What qualities in a potential mentor would tell you she has a firm commitment to sound doctrine? And what are some possible red flags? Hmm. What steps could you take to deepen your grasp of God's word and to saturate your mind, heart, and life with sound doctrine? Actually, if you have an answer to that one, I would love to hear it. For me, sometimes it's writing on Sharpie on my hand, meditating or memorizing scripture in the morning, obviously reading God's word, listening to God's word, but I'd love more ideas if you have them. Um, please let me know in the comments and I am praying for you. We will be back next week with chapter three, which it says, don't give up on that modeling career, aging beautifully at all ages. And as I'm heading towards wrinkle town, that's a great thing I would love. I'm excited to know about this next chapter. So I will see you next week. And please uh, invite your friends, comment below, like or subscribe, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye.